Hello, my beautiful creatives, and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B, and I'm a creativity coach, hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Well, today is part two of my hinged uh, book using my decorated underpapers. And so I will leave a link to the original video, the first part of this video here. What you're gonna need for this project is a paper cutter and or scissors, whichever you prefer. If you don't have a paper cutter, you'll need a ruler as well. I am using um, a cardboard box uh, from a cereal box. You can also use a file folder if you'd like. I'm gonna use a cereal box. You're also gonna want to have some cardstock, some type of adhesive. I'm gonna use a Tombow permanent adhesive. You can also use Aliens Fast Grab Tacky Glue. You can also use a glue stick totally fine and it's totally up to you either of those things any any and all of those things will work I think I'm gonna try the Tombow permanent adhesive first if not I'll use my aliens fast grab tacky glue so what you're going to need to do now your, co your cover is gonna be made out of the cardboard your hinges are gonna be made out of the uh, cardstock and the first thing I want to do is you're going to want to measure your pages that you created using your under paper. Okay. Now I've already done that. And all I did was I took a piece of the file folder, like I showed you earlier, and I just kind of made myself a template, making it just a little bit longer, a little bit wider than what I know I needed. So that way I know that when this is all put together, all the little inside pages will be nice and covered. So my measurements for that were three and one eighths wide and four and five eighths long. You'll need two of those and you're going to cut that out of your cardboard. So I always try to figure out where the, the manufacturer glued the cardboard together. That just makes your life a little bit easier when you're trying to open it up, pull it apart to open it up. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just use my paper cutter real quick move some stuff out of my way here and I have for myself I always use my paper cutter upside down I don't know why I do that I just kind of do and I want to maybe my first cut will be let's cut this little flappy bit off and then I can use my paper cutter and it doesn't matter if this isn't perfectly perfect I will have tons of leftovers of this um, after doing this and I'll need two of this size which I'm going to use this as my template so let me grab a pencil and I'm just going to see if I can get these both side by side so I use oops I create the least amount of waste if that makes sense I want to be able to use as much of the other parts of the cardboard for other projects as I can so we'll use one of the lines as the line for our, maybe we will, maybe we won't, uh, because we have this little not niceness here. And I don't want that to accidentally get involved in my cut. Just kind of trace that out. And then, like I said, you can use um, just your scissors to do this. If you don't have a paper cutter, I didn't have a paper cutter for years. I didn't know what a paper cutter even was. I just knew that scissors worked great. So that's what I used. Uh, but now that I have a paper cutter, it just makes my life so much easier. So I try to take advantage when possible. Now I don't generally use these little flappy bits at the bottom, so I don't care if I cut into that. I am gonna stop my cut, however, at the top of this line so that I don't waste any more of my cardboard. because I know that my cardboard won't fit under my cutter the other direction, I'm just gonna use my scissors to finish that cut. Okay, so now we have two pieces of cardboard. One is the front and one is the back. Now I am going to put the raw side in because I will decorate this outside, probably starting with some craft paper of some sort, some uh, scrapbook paper, and then I'll go ahead and paint and do some other stuff over the top of it. But um, yeah, so that will be your cover. And I'm just kind of testing to make sure that my edges are hidden and my 
my actual end of my pages are hidden. So that seems to work rather well. So I'm gonna set these aside. Not only my cover and back, I'm also going to um, put my pages aside as well. And we will come back to these soon. But you are now ready to create your hinges. And to do that, to create your hinges, you'll need some cardstock. So the first thing you want to do with your cardstock, so I'm just going to take one piece here, set the rest aside. I'm going to use that same template I had for my cover, and I'm going to use that as a template for my hinges as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up in the corner because I want to have one strip of paper that is the same height as the book. Okay. And I'm gonna cut, that's the mark for my book. And I'm gonna cut just a little bit to the right of it. So it's a little bit shorter, just a tiny bit shorter than the book. Like so. So now if you look at your pages compared to, oh, well, let's see. Let's see if I do this the easiest way compare that to a cover. It's just a touch short, okay? Which is what you want, just a touch. Same with your page. It's just a touch short. I don't know, I find that doing that makes it so that you don't feel so much pressure on yourself to make everything perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut, instead of one inches, I'm gonna do three fourths of an inch strips. Okay, so I've got all my hinges cut out. I have 16 hinges, and that is because I have 16 pages. Okay, so just make sure you match the number of hinges to the number of pages you have. So we are almost ready to get started on the assembly part. However, we need to do something with the hinges. So we have, just to recap, we have two covers, a front and back. We have our 16 pages that we created from our underpapers, and we have 16 hinges that measure um, four and five eighths tall and about three quarters of an inch thick, okay, wide. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna take all of the hinges and you'll wanna actually fold them in half. Now, this would be super simple if you had a scoreboard, which I do not, and now I can totally see the benefit of why you'd want one. But you're going to take each one of your 16 hinges and you're gonna actually fold them in half, long ways. What they call that in school, hot dog ways? And just kinda of take your time, and you're gonna to wanna to do that with all 16 of your hinges. And I'm gonna kinda of just futz with mine just a minute because I wanna make sure it's as straight as I can get it without a, without a board. And I'm gonna use a bone folder to like really make sure that that's flat. Okay? And you wanna do that with all 16 of your hinges. And I'm gonna fold mine back out again, but you will want that bend in there, okay? So I'm gonna do that for all 16 of them, and I'll be right back. Okay, a quick note for you. I was kind of dreading having the, to fold all these by hand. It can be very time consuming, but because we did this in exactly three fourths of an inch, you can actually use your paper cutter as a guide. Just center that paper cutter over, center your paper on the paper cutter where you would cut it, if you're gonna cut it directly down the center. Now I have a little ball stylus that I'm just gonna take down this center here because there is a groove in your paper cutter. And you can use that as your, look at that, so much easier, how cool is that? Uh, you could use that as your little line maker. I'm still gonna press it down with my bone folder just to make sure it's straight. And now I'll be back as soon as I finish with all 16 of my hinges. Just thought you might. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do before I assemble, I'm going to put uh, my decorative papers on uh, my cover, my cover and my back and front cover. And I have these pieces of paper that I have played around on quite a while ago, and they've been kind of sitting in my stash, and they're kind of messy, 
but I thought they'd be a really fun way to start my uh, book. So I'll do more on top of whatever it is that I choose. This one is encyclopedia. It might be a dictionary. This one is more dictionary. I like the crinkly of that paper, but I also really like the music sheets. I know you can't really tell that, but um, I'm going to choose this one because it's kind of the one that my my little self says, yes, that's the one we have to use. And I'm going to kind of decide where I want, you know, how I want my pages to lay. So maybe we'll do it like that. And I'm going to be very unscientific about this. I'm just going to flip it over and we're going to kind of let it just happen. Meaning I'm going to kind of guesstimate where I think it should go. And whatever I cut out, that is what goes on this cover, back or front. Okay. Let's see, what do I see over here? I like the loop thingies. Let's see if I can get some of that on there. And I'll just use my, I'll just use my scissors to cut this out. Okay, I've got my decorative papers cut out for my front and back covers. Let me put all this away. And I'm just going to grab a glue stick and one of my glue pads. And I'm going to just adhere that down to the colored side of my front and back cover. Now it doesn't matter at this point which one's your front and which one's your back. You can decide that later. You don't even have to decide which way's up or down yet. Because we will put those on your book very, very last. Okay. Let's just kind of use some glue stick and adhere that down. Like so. So there's one. And here's the other. Now I'm using glue stick because just because um, I know that this book page is so thin that it will adhere down really well. If I was using a uh, cardstock or something much thicker, I would probably use, um, I don't know, Aliens Fast Grab Tack Blue would be a great option for that. You could also use gel medium if you wanted to. However, I don't have patience for that to dry. I just want to be able to play because now that we've got all that done, we now have the ability to assemble our book. So I'm going to decide that you are that way, I think, for now, and you are that way. So now we have a front and the back, and they go together, although they are ready for arting, which is same for all the pages. The pages are all juiced up, but they are ready for arting. Okay, so now let's get to the hinges. Let's set our cover, our back and front cover up to the side. You'll want your pages and you'll want your hinges, okay? Now I was going to use my Tombow Mono Adhesive Mark, uh, uh, tape. However, it's too wide. I'm going to use my 1 fourth inch score tape. Now, if you don't have this, feel free to use Aliens Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Um, I don't know if I would use glue stick for this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one hinge. Okay, I'm going to start with one hinge, one piece of paper. One hinge, one page. And I'm going to use Make sure your pages are in the order you want them to be in. I did not do that, so let me do that real quick. And the way that I'm gonna think about this is I'm gonna do blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, if that makes sense. If you look at all my pages, they have some have more, more blue, some are more purple. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Make sure I've got all my pages. I'm going to do no, no order. Purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, uh, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue. And there are some really white ones in here. So let's see, purple, blue, white. Purple, blue, white. Purple, blue, white. Purple, blue, white. I have two purple blues left over, so I'm going to put two of those in the back and two of those in the front. That's how I randomize my pages. It's 
just that easy. The other thing you need to kind of keep in mind as you're doing your pages is you want to know which side you don't mind covering because the hinge will end up covering part of your paper. So keep that in mind. I do have some uh, raw edges. I will probably tuck those into the hinge, but I'll decide that as I'm going. There is no right or wrong way to do that, to decide which order your pages go in, and there's no wrong way to decide which way is up. Okay, so without making this too complicated, what you're going to do is take one hinge and one page, and then put everything else out of your way so you don't confuse yourself. You're going to take your double-sided tape, your score tape, and you're going to line it up at the edge, the right-hand side. So let me, let me back up. You have a left-hand side and you have a right-hand side. You're going to ignore the left-hand side. You're only going to want to deal with the right-hand side. And what you're going to do is take your score tape and you're going to line that up as close to the edge. Oops. Oops. Okay, well, we're going to try not to do that again. And just lay it down along your edge like so. Burnish it down with your finger. I'm probably not going to go to the edge because uh, not all of my pages are the same length. Some of them are a little bit shorter. Now because I missed that piece up there, I want to go in and, oops, do not stick down please. I want to go in and kind of just make sure it's covered as well. Okay, so burnish that down with your finger really well. And you're gonna wanna take, ignore the left hand side, on the right hand side, just take your tape off, your backing of your tape. I get it. I have no fingernails at the moment, which is really weird. And then you're gonna wanna take your page and you wanna just kinda lay it so that the edge lines up with the edge of your tape. You don't want your book to fall into the hinge. Like, you don't want it to go all the way to the fold. And then burnish that down. And now you've got one hinge created, okay? Now what you're gonna do is, now this is folded, just flip the whole thing over. And on the back of this hinge, you're going to cover with your score tape, burnish it down, remove the backing, and grab another hinge. Now make sure if you look at the hinge like an alligator, the alligator's mouth is open that way and closed this way. You want to make sure that that is how yours is sitting. I'm going to turn the hinge towards myself, the fold, and I want the fold of this new hinge also pointing to me, and I want these to line up as best I can get it. So I'm gonna line up the edges and kind of mush them down. And my goal is to make this as straight as possible because this will be your spine. You're basically building your spine right there. So once you've got that tape down, I see that I was off a little bit, that's fine. Ignore the left-hand side and address the right-hand side, just like we did before. Take your, your tape, double-sided tape, or adhesive, whatever you're using, and get that as close to the edge as you can. Like so. Burnish it down. Remove your backing. Grab another page. This one has a lot of white on this side, so I'm gonna put that white towards the center. And I'm just gonna lay that down. Okay. Once that's in, I'm gonna fold my page. And I'm gonna put score tape on this back part of the hinge. Burnish it down. Remove the backing. Turn it towards myself. I'm gonna do the same thing with another hinge. Alligator's facing that way. Trying to oh, not stick it down. This will take a little bit of patience, more patience than I normally have. 
but I will grow some patience for this project because I want it to look nice. and burnish that down. Turn it back to the pages on the left, open your hinge, you're gonna ignore the left-hand side, deal with the right-hand side. Okay, do you see the pattern that's happening here? Put your score tape down. Burnish it down. Remove the backing. Okay, so there we go. Grab another page. And then lay that down straight. Okay, if you find any tape poking over, that's fine. I will just cover it with washi probably when I go to decorate my pages. Okay, fold your page. Put more score tape. I'm just going to keep repeating this exact same process over and over again until all your pages are done. So last time. Put your score tape down. Burnish it. Take the backing off. I don't know why I'm now deciding to fight with this. It's going so nicely. There we go. Turn it away from you. Grab another hinge, alligator facing away from you. Line this up on the edge as best you can and burnish it down. Open your hinge with the pages on your left. Add score tape to the right hand side of the hinge. Oops, did not get that near the top, that's okay. I'm call that one good, I think. Burnish that down. Take the score tape backing off. Take another page and put that in place. Okay, and then turn the page and keep doing that until you get all 16 of your pages into your little book. This is what your book looks like so far. Okay. So do that, do that for all 16 pages. And I'll be back as soon as I'm done with mine. Okay, so I've got all 16 of my pages in place and it doesn't want to lay down, which I'm okay with. I just think it's kind of cool. So basically you have this flap on the front and all your pages are in there one by one. The cool thing about this is that when you do then come in here to, to decide to art journal on this, however you want to do that. The book lays open flat, which that's the joy of, the perk of doing a hinged book. Okay. Um, and then you have this uh, naked piece on the back. So now we are ready to put covers on. Now you have one of two choices with your front cover. You can either choose to adhere that to the front of the flap or you, have, you can adhere it inside of the flap, like that or like that. I'm going to adhere mine to the front on top of the flap and then this one on the back here. Okay, so this is super easy. All you need to do is take your score tape. Score tape makes this super fast because you don't have to wait for anything to dry and you know I love that. I'm just going to take this score tape and I'm going to run it down the spine run it down that front piece there, that little floppy bit. And then trim it. I'm also going to run it down the back. That back piece of this spine. Whoopsie. I'm going to put a bed in it. It'll be alright. It'll lay flat once I take the backing off. Put that on. And then we're done with the score tape. So I'm going to set that aside. Oops. I forgot to get stuck to my underpapers. So I'm going to take, we'll do the cover first, take the score tape backing off. At this point, you should have had to, you should have decided which one was your front and which one's your back. So this one is going to be my front, even though it will be upside down. And I'm gonna do the same 
I line this up with my spine and just kind of mush it down. Flip the whole shebang over. Take the score tape backing off like that. I'm going to just kind of burnish that fold down. And I see that my backing needs to be trimmed a little better. So I'm going to just stop just a second and trim that up. Like I forgot to cut all of a sudden. Forgot how to cut all of a sudden. Okay. So now once I've gotten that the way I want it, I'm going to turn the book page is facing away from me. I'm going to center my back cover up on the spine like I did with the front and burnish that down. And there is our little book. Now, it's still going to want to pop open. I'm not sure if that's just because, I don't know, I might have chosen uh, too heavy of a cardstock. There's one last thing I'm going to do to, to finish this off, and it's because I like the way that it looks. But I want to pull out my gaffer's tape. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. You can use duct tape. You can use masking tape. I like gaffer's tape because it's very sturdy and I feel like it will protect my spine. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a piece of that a little bit wider than the book itself. Longer than the book itself. And I want to center this in as best I can. And this is why I chose to put my front cover upside down because I want, this will cover part of my edge. So I'm gonna burnish this down to my hinges, my hinge spine. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim right up to the end of the book. Oops. Okay, make that as straight as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect, but straight is always good. Okay, then, can you see what I'm doing? My camera is kind of wigging out. I'm gonna do the same with the other side, cut it to the edge. Now, the way that I do this is I kind of rock it back and forth until it starts to kind of grab just a little bit. And I'm gonna take it and pinch it just a little bit down the sides. I'm kind of like burnishing it down without sticking it in one fell swoop. I find that when I go to stick this down in one fell swoop, I usually mess up and cause there to be a ridge in it or something like that. But now your book sits flat, flatter. Um, your spine is totally covered and protected, which I appreciate because then I think the book will take a beating much easier without damaging in any way. You have the ability to decorate both sides I don't know, I think this is cute. And what a fun way to use your underpapers because really that's what this project started as, is I had these underpapers I wanna do something with, I just didn't know what. And there you have it. I, I'm thinking of, is there other ways to do this? There might be, but I have a whole nother undersheet that I can play with. And there you go, that is your finished under paper journal. How is that? Any questions for me? Please let me know down in the comment section. I'm super happy to help you in whatever way that I can. Um, yeah, I really think that if I would have um, maybe bone folded my hinges just a little bit better or like the massaging of the book, just kind of like getting it trained to go where I want it to go and then your book will sit straight. So that seemed to work. And all I did with that is I just kind of rolled my hand, my uh, spine a little bit. Just to kind of like reinforce that this is the, I want you folded down nice and taut. And then the book sits well, both sides, woohoo. Okay, progress. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you in any way that I can. Um, I hope that you give this a try. If you do, please make feel free to tag me on uh, Instagram, beautiful creatives. 
And I would be super jazzed to check out what your work, what you're playing at, because uh, this is a lot of fun. So thanks so much for stopping by. Until next time, bye for now.